It's part of Portland's reputation and landscape. Everywhere you look, there are people living on our sidewalks and streets. The homeless crisis has now reached a breaking point. Portland has been under a housing emergency for close to six years. Many believe there are more tents on our streets than ever. Much of the blame lobbed at city officials who largely stopped clearing camps during the pandemic. Neighbors across Portland and the region are dealing with homeless encampments. And tonight, we're taking a close look at how the city of Portland is failing to help neighbors and the homeless. Over the past two decades, the local homelessness crisis has slowly risen to become an ever greater issue. As of January 2020, 14,665 people are homeless in the state of Oregon. Out of that number, 825 are family households. The local and state government seems to be unable to stop this exponential issue. Thankfully, homeless shelters have helped to work towards a solution. I went to the Good Neighbor Center, a homeless shelter for families, to learn how they have been serving the homeless. To learn more about the shelter, I interviewed Genevieve Sheridan, the executive director, Robert Cutshaw, an employee for 20 years, and Catherine and Max, two past residents. My name is Catherine. I'm 31. I was born in Riverside County, California, and uh, my mom was a nurse, and and we had a pretty good little setup, but recovery is a part of my family's history from drugs and alcohol. And so it did make its way around to me. Because of poor choices I had made due to addiction, I ended up suffering natural consequences like homelessness. When COVID first hit, I was a senior in high school. Pretty much after I graduated high school, it was this weird time of couch surfing during the quarantine and then I became homeless about a year after that. Yeah, it's been super weird growing up as like an adult, being homeless and not being able to find work. And it's like the worst case scenario you could imagine about leaving your house where you grew up. Well, I would say not having established uh, income and of course the price of housing keeps going up and income doesn't keep going up. So wage stagnation and the skyrocketing cost of living combined and we do not have structures in place to support families with small children and the majority of parents who come here are employed but they are employed with low wages and right now there's no child care to be had. When I wanted to get better I found Good Neighbor Center. <laughs> and they opened the doors to me and the kids. There's nothing that they did not do to support us and help us. Every avenue that you would see a family need for sustainability. And I was like one of the hardest cases. They helped me pay off the property debt to fix my credit to make me eligible. They navigated avenues as far as um, legal trouble that I had been in in the past that disqualified me. And, um, with all their help and support, now I have like a case manager for a whole year. I have constant support with that kind of stuff. And we got to move into our first home, a brand new three bedroom, two bathroom. My son is autistic and ADHD and a toddler. They helped me email schools, find out what programs he was eligible for. They helped me communicate with these people that would give him his organ eligibility. And now he has a whole team of people and She's progressed beautifully. And um, my daughter, Emma, she loves the Good Neighbor Center. She wants to go back all the time. She loves the staff there. They, they just gave us so much love. Like they did their jobs and they had jobs to do and they did them wonderfully, but they went way above the job thing. The Good Neighbor Center's helped me by, you know, taking me from off the street into a temporary shelter to now permanent housing. In the way that they were able to get me connected to food assistance and help me with like food stamps and getting me connected to potential support groups. It actually helped me get back in touch with my family because now that I have a steady place to stay and I have support, I've been able to reach out to family members that I haven't talked to in the last few years. If it weren't for the Good Neighbor Center, I'd probably still be on the street and begging for people's change. It's quite literally changed my life. 
I think we're being more holistic than ever. So right now, this nine room family shelter is what we're known for, but it is just a fraction of what we do. We actually serve uh, at any given moment, three or four times as many families outside of the shelter as inside. So we have a supportive housing services program at a newly constructed affordable housing complex called Viewfinder. We serve 20 families there, and then we have 12 families that we serve in scattered site affordable housing. And then we have dozens of families that we provide food boxes and hygiene boxes to for up to a year. So many families who come here may come from generational poverty. Families can only stay here for six to eight weeks. So in that very short time, uh, that's not enough for personal transformation to usually take place, which is why we have these outside programs for a year. Well, I continue to focus on my sobriety because recovery is a huge part of um, what quality of life I live today. And so I put that first and um, that's a full-time job and I take good care of my kids. Good neighbor put me in a position where I can break many generational curses. And, um, and so I believe like my goal is to fix it here and then fix it in my home and then go out and pay it forward by taking my healed happy self into the world and helping other people fix it. And um, I would have given up because it was not easy whatsoever if it wasn't for the Good Neighbor Center. Find a steady job, pay rent, and hopefully go to college and become an artist. I got a phone call uh, from someone that said that Good Neighbor Center needed help and uh, looked up some information and realized that this was very worthwhile. And I came here temporarily part-time initially and decided to stay full-time permanently because it is such a great community and people who stay here return uh, just for fun because they want to share their experience or they want to give back and I don't think anyone ever truly leaves. I think that there's just like, well, we'll see you later. We'll see you soon. I started back in, when I was in high school. We were uh, in the basement of the church and I was volunteering through our church. I've always done it, you know, and uh, I feel like this, everybody here is like one big family. Everybody that moves in and stays, they're part of the family and we want to see them achieve. This is the first job I've ever had and I've said it before is that I'm actually trying to work myself out of a job. To fulfill our mission, we just wouldn't have jobs anymore. So that would be great. We could do other things. I don't think uh, the Good Neighbor Center will ever get rid of us. We really love them. <laughs> yeah, but that's about it.